Unfortunately, there's another blow to the Cincinnati Bengals edge depth with Cam Samples injury being serious, but Miles Murphy and Joseph Osai are making plays in training camp. Let's discuss the Bengals edge. You are locked on Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network here on Locked On Bengals, covering your team every day. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere you get your podcast. So if you're new to the show, you can hit that subscribe button and make sure you don't miss any updates throughout this Bengals preseason because we will have you covered shout out to the everyday or shout out to all of you who make us your first listen appreciate all of the regulars out there who have made this podcast part of their daily routine and james today a, another practice where the defense seemed to come out on top and largely because of contributions from the bengals edge depth which as i mentioned will continue to be tested now with cam sample having an achilles tear according to zach taylor before practice today and unfortunately he will be out for the season. Yeah, let's start there. That sucks. It, it's awful because even in the world where Miles Murphy has a breakout second year, even in a world where Joseph Osai in a contract year in his fourth year stays healthy, makes plays, and does everything that we're going to talk about both of those guys doing, and we will get to them, I promise. You were hoping you'd have Cam Sample, and you were hoping you'd have this guy that had some inside-outside flex. He's like Sam Hubbard light almost, where – he does the stuff that I think Sam could do and kick inside and is, is certainly willing to do that and has been your consistent third end in this Hendrickson Hubbard era. And is he a star? No. But did he have a clear role? Was he the one of these under the radar type guys that makes uh, an impact or makes Lou Anarumo and Marion Hobby's life easier? He was. So it just, it sucks. And it, it's a contract year for him to, and uh, obviously that's the business side, but it just, it sucks. I was talking to Miles about Cam and he's like, it's just awful. You just try to be there for him uh, as best you can. But uh, there's not um, much you can say other than that, I think. But it is it is a, a significant loss. I think some will see it and be like, Cam, Sample, oh, well, they have Osire, they have Murphy. This is a pretty significant loss for the defensive line. Yeah, several hundred snaps. And like you said, this is a reliable depth player, a player that, as you mentioned, Luana Rumo could trust to do the things that he was asked to do as a rotational player off the bench, a proven veteran backup late in his rookie deal. And you, you do feel terrible for the player, especially in a contract year for a guy who had a chance to go get a, a solid multi multi-year deal on the free agent market, either with the Bengals or elsewhere. And now that will have to wait until he recovers from the Achilles and we'll see where that is. And it puts more pressure on this Bengals defensive line to find depth answers behind Trey Hendrickson, behind Sam Hubbard. Both of those guys remain week to week. Zach Taylor confirmed, thanks to a question from James in his presser and Zach Taylor's presser earlier today. So don't expect to see those guys in the preseason. And, well, we're probably going to have to see a lot of Miles Murphy and Joseph Osai. And for me, in my four days of practice observation so far down here in Cincinnati a big and very clear winner to me has been Joseph Osai I think every day I've talked to you at some point about Joseph Osai winning a pass rush rep and today the 11 on 11 work in practice was largely what well, was entirely in fact get out of your own end zone you know, you're, you're backed up on the two yard line after the opposition in in a scenario pinned you back deep after a punt or a turnover, or whatever happened, get out of your own end zone. And the Bengals defense, first team defense, got two potential safeties, one of them from Joseph Osai, one of them from Miles Murphy, uh, on a run stop and on a, on a passing play. Murphy with a couple of, uh, sorry, Osai with a couple of impressive run stops, where prior to today, James, I thought that the, the majority of his success was coming in terms of the pass rush, but today flashing with a couple of really nice run stops on Zach Moss when the Bengals were trying to run the ball to get some breathing room. Uh, backed up to their own goal line. And that's such a key because if if the Bengals are going to be comfortable playing Osai, regular snaps, more snaps, giving Sam Hubbard extra rest or Trey Hendrickson extra rest, of course he needs to bring Juice as a pass rusher. But he's also got to be able to hold up against the run. And 
that's a, a point of emphasis for all of these defensive ends. We know that. We know how much they value that, how much they value Sam Hubbard setting the edge. So if Osai can make a splash play in the backfield, and it's not just on the quarterback, but it's also uh, in the running game, you would take that all day long, and I know the Bengals are prioritizing that. And you mentioned Osai over the past couple of days. It does go hand in hand. Miles Murphy, the past couple of practices against the run in particular, I think has has stood out and made an impact, shedding Amarius or Marius Mims multiple times, and and making a play on Chase Brown, making plays in space against running backs, and, and then today uh, comes up big uh, again with with Burrow in the shadow of his own goalposts, which we can get to the get to that play in just a second. But to your point, Osai, I noticed him a bunch. I noticed him mixing it up with Charlie Jones a bit. That's the other thing about this practice. Uh, there was a little, little more heat to it, a little more hitting, um, and uh, Osai shoves Charlie Jones basically after the play. It was definitely blown dead, and uh, Jones falls. Jones gets up and talks a little trash to him and throws the ball at him. Uh, so th there were a couple moments like that. Uh, the very next play, Logan Wilson hit Andre Yosovash on a screen, and he just, just dropped him, and Alex Kappa shoved Logan Wilson. So there was no fighting. But definitely some some checking, which is is always good to see Charlie Jones checking Joseph Osai, even though he's giving up a, a lot of size there. And then Alex Kappa having Yoshi's back. But yeah, Osai, he's been in the mix. He's making an impact so far, and it needs to continue. Because the the one thing I will say, we've seen this from Joseph. Yes, we've seen practice record Joseph Osai. We've seen even preseason impact player Joseph Osai. We need to see regular season impact player Joseph Osai. So I'm excited about it. It's good to see, but it needs to continue. And we've seen some of that too. It's just been a while and he needs to get back to that form and will have that opportunity this year. He will be one of the first two guys off the bench and he's been working on the Trey Hendrickson side of the field and Miles Murphy has largely been working on the Sam Hubbard side of the field. Not that that's necessarily exclusive. That's just where the majority of those reps are coming. And you mentioned the Miles Murphy play that he, he just comes screaming around the edge and one of the clearest defeats of an Amarius men's pass blocking set that we've seen in this camp besides Sam Hubbard getting him on uh, an overset, beating him inside when Sam Hubbard was still practicing. It was a very likely sack, I would say. And, and James, you have this clip on social media as well, I believe. Uh, he lets up, of course, and Joe Burrow is able to, you know, do whatever he needs to do after that and, and continue to execute the practice plan there. But looks like a clear win for Miles Murphy against Demarius Mims. And if you've been listening to the show for the last few days, you've heard a lot of Amarius Mims looks great in pass pro. We haven't seen him really get beat. And that was probably the first instance in a team 11 on, uh, uh, 11, on 11 setting where we did see that happen. And I will say the, the one element here, and there's been a lot of clips of Amarius Mims, and people were excited about Amarius Mims, and rightfully so. But he can make Miles Murphy better. And having to deal with a guy like that who's – Six seven six eight three forty five three fifty whatever Amari's weighs now. It's not something Miles is going to always have to deal with, and so learning to win, learning to beat my or Mims at times and get past Amarius, that's going to help Miles. It's going to make him better, and I do think he's. We're in practice ten now. He's getting used to uh, Amarius, and that's good because I'm sure it's making him better. It's obviously making Mims better too, and and. It's good to see Miles Murphy trending in the right direction. I talked to him after practice. Uh, certainly feels like he has the right mindset and, and just point of attack mentality is what he said. Not run or pass, point of attack, whether it's the quarterback, whether it's a running back. And uh, if he can show off those athletic traits, we saw it. He got by Mims and was able to do what I think would have been a, a sack and, and a safety, uh, bring down Joe Burrow. And the question remains as to whether the Bengals have enough guys on the defensive line to get through the preseason. That's one question. But to thrive in the regular season, let's discuss whether they should make a move to bolster their depth on the defensive interior before we get to the unsurprising depth chart coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. And right now, well, Bengals preseason football is just a few days away. And 
it's time for you to get in on all the action. And right now, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. So you can take advantage of the boost or bonus daily at FanDuel.com. And it's all customers. So maybe you've listened to us for a long time and you've been on the FanDuel train, or maybe you're one of our first listeners and you want to get in on the action. All you have to do is go to FanDuel.com where the Bengals, I'm looking at these Super Bowl odds, and yeah, there's a few teams ahead of them. Uh, but the most passing yards this season, well, Joe Burrow is about behind a few guys, Tua Tungavailoa, CJ Stroud, and Patrick Mahomes. He is tied with Dak Prescott. Get in on those plus 1,000 odds right now at FanDuel. So don't delay. Go to FanDuel and get in on all the action this football season. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. James, so the Bengals sign a defensive end. We just talked about how good we have seen in these recent practices from Miles Murphy from Can Sample, but with McKinley Jackson leaving practice on Monday, there's another note. How many defensive linemen are actually healthy for mm -hmm. this preseason game? Maybe B.J. Hill will play a drive, and then they're going to be seriously tested on the defensive interior while sh where Sheldon Rankins continues to work on the rehab field. I don't think there's anything significant there, but he's working through something. And, well, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson still week to week. Not that they would have played much in the preseason anyway, but in addition to that, you've got several depth players on the defensive interior who haven't practiced. Jay Tefele was on the rehab field on Monday as well as Devonche Maxwell. A lot of players on that rehab field, on this defensive front. And that also begs the question of, well, is the depth good enough for the regular season or is this time to make a move to give yourself a little bit more security with that depth on the defensive line? Would not shock me if they make a move. I, and it's you, when you lose someone that has that versatility like Cam and when you're going to take it slow or nice and easy with Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, which I don't blame them, by the way. You don't rush them back so you have enough bodies for camp. Mm -hmm. But it's a huge blow. And that's before – we don't know the McKinley-Jackson injury. He limped off and then was ultimately carted to the locker room. Maybe it's something really small, and he'll be back out there in a couple of days. We just don't know right now. But and, – and by the way, a guy that big, if he's dealing with a lower body thing, you're, you're carting him anyways. So I wouldn't read into that much either. And he did walk to the cart. For sure. And, and so it's not like he wasn't putting weight on his foot or anything like that, but it's something worth watching and a unit that we already had questions about. Now we're talking about the first defense event, second defense event, starting nose tackle. We're talking about DE three is slash rotational DE that kicks inside or DT that kicks inside sometimes in camp sample. Like th there's some little things. And then obviously the camp sample injury makes it really tough. So yeah, I think they, I think they will, and, and who is, is interesting. We can have that conversation probably another day. We haven't uh, looked at the uh, the free agent pool. There are some names that I'm sure you're going to mention in the comments right now as I'm talking about it. Uh, but without uh, looking in, in more depth, I'd want to wait and see who they could potentially target without naming potentially a, you know, a familiar face, which everyone will do. I've already had questions about Carl Lawson. See, everyone yes. will do that. Yeah. I've also had people in on, on the same vein. Uh, hold on. Hold, Justin Smith? Are you <laughs> Justin Smith? No, I'm just kidding. Carl still has something left. And actually, if they could get Justin Smith, you know how nasty he would be. I wonder what kind of shape Justin Smith is in. 2004 Justin Smith in 2024 would be insane. Love a good Justin Smith throwback. Wasn't expecting that one today. That's that's going back in the archives a little bit. Also, I've had people say, you know, along the lines of bringing up Carl Lawson's name that they'll believe it when they see it with Joseph Osai. And so for all of these camp observations, for everything that we're talking about with some of these young guys right now, you obviously need to see it translate in preseason games. You need to see that carry over into the regular season as well. And just because they're doing it in camp doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. But when we see these things, of course, we talk about these things. We also saw a depth chart from the Cincinnati Bengals for the first time in 2024 on Monday. And I would call it about as unsurprising as you might imagine. But the, the one note on there that we can dive into a little bit is the right tackle listing still has a Marius Mims as the second offensive tackle. If you mm. were following along on Twitter, you saw me tweet out a video that showed in terms of 
offensive line drills. And Marius Mims was still with the ones on Monday, but Trent Brown sounds to be pretty confident that there's a decent shot. He will still emerge with that job when week one rolls around. He's not concerned, not concerned. It isn't, I, I will pull up the exact quote. We would have used the clip, but the music was booming in there at the time. So uh, instead of uh, playing that music for you, um, I, as I look up the quote, though, Trent Brown was out there. He did go through individual drills. That part is huge just to have him out there and uh, just get him going. And, and this apparently was the plan. He said he, he's got to get in football shape. Um, but he said it'll play out when asked about the battle. It'll play itself out. I'm not worried. And it was similar to how he approached it in March where he kind of made a face after they signed him like, oh, not worried if they draft an offensive tackle in the first round. And I don't think he should be worried. Not, not that Amarius Mims can't win the job. I don't mean that. But if you're Trent Brown, you want to get in healthy and, and you want to be in a position to go succeed. And I'm, I think he views this coaching staff, the team, uh, likes the, the situation. And this is as much, I think, how the team wants to approach Trent and, and handle Trent as it is Trent dealing with any injury or anything like that. I, I, I think he's happy to be out there. And at the same time, the goal is to get him just over a month from now healthy and ready to go on September 8th. Yeah, that would obviously be the objective. And whether he's the first tackle off the bench or he's starting at right tackle, he will be essentially the backup at both positions if, if an injury were to occur. Because if they needed a left tackle, Marius Mims is only repping at right tackle. This was a, a topic of conversation when they drafted him. Should they work him at both tackle spots with the expectation that he could be a backup? Well, Trent Brown's absence throughout training camp to this point has led to whether by uh, a plan that was in place before training camp started or whether it was influenced by Trent Brown's availability, a plan that has led to Amarius Mims taking all snaps at right tackle. So if there were a need for a left tackle, you would imagine that Trent Brown would swing over there where he's played before and Amarius Mims would assume the position where he's been practicing for the Bengals where he played at Georgia that would probably be the plan either way. We'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, I think, was it you? Did you also ask about uh, whether Trent needed to play in preseason games when Zach was sitting up here? I did, because I asked really, really good questions. Zach Taylor. <laughs> it's his birthday. It's okay. That's right. Uh, Zach Taylor uh, did basically say, eh, don't necessarily need to see Trent in the preseason. So what that tells me is Amarius is going to have to have one hell of a the rest of camp and a heck of a, a showing in, in some preseason games here to win that job. That, that's really what it tells me. Not that it's not a competition, but if, if the team is comfortable with Trent not playing in the preseason, then they're comfortable with what he brings. What, what else is there to say? He's doing individual drills today. Going to probably do individual drills later this week. Maybe some team drills next week before they go to Chicago for that joint practice. Like I, I think – that's probably it. And maybe he'll get some team reps next week and, and you go from there. But they, we, there's a very real chance that we don't see Trent Brown this preseason and that he's still starting week one against the Patriots. Not saying it's guaranteed because it's far from that, uh, but there is a chance that that happens. Up next, Jake Lisko, Mr. Anti-Kicker, Anti-Punter. Jake Lisko wants to talk special teams because it was a special teams heavy practice. We will do that. Coming up next. Today's episode of Locked On Bengals is sponsored by BetterHelp. And BetterHelp knows that everyone has their own non-negotiables. Maybe you need to set some new boundaries with yourself that include not skipping leg day like James Rapine or not skipping therapy day because that is a very healthy thing to do. That was a James joke. You great. need therapy. And, and you need that bit of help to make sure those non-negotiables don't slip. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities and big work projects, it's easy to let those priorities slip. And BetterHelp can help you to reevaluate how you manage those priorities and make sure that those non-negotiables don't slip. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you can give BetterHelp a try. They make it very easy. It's entirely online. It's flexible. It's suited to your schedule. They will match you with a licensed therapist after you fill out a little questionnaire. And if 
you're not feeling the vibe with that initial therapist assignment, you can switch at any time for no additional charge. So if you need to never skip therapy day or never skip leg day, you can try BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on. You'll get one, you'll get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. All right, Jake, let's get to some specialists and start with the news of the day in the specialist world. Harrison Butker signed a, yeah. a huge, huge deal for a lot of money. Four years, $25.6 million, I think, $17 million guaranteed, something like that. Evan McPherson had no idea coming off of the field, and his first reaction was just how awesome of a kicker Harrison was. Mm. He, he was like, man, that dude – is insane. Praised him for how many kicks he made against the Bengals in December mm. when the weather was crazy in Kansas City. So obviously this pushes the market forward for kickers and Evan Money Mac McPherson. I still don't know if he knows I gave him that nickname and that's where it started. Never came out and told him that, but he's about to get paid at some point. This does elevate the kicker market. <laughs> it has now surpassed the Justin Tucker level. Justin Tucker's average annual per year is $6 million. And this is $6.4 million. So how does that impact the well, one Justin Tucker, who probably will be compensated to match his uh, reputation and status as the best kicker in the NFL, but two, the Bengals who are ostensibly working on an extension with Evan McPherson this off season before we get to the regular season. That is certainly something that fits into the special teams theme. Does the deal get done, James? Oh, Here's what I like about Evan. He's like, eh. like if a deal gets done, it gets done. That'd be great. I would love a deal to get done. But as long as I go out there and I kick well, I'm going to get paid at some point. Mm -hmm. And he really seems indifferent, which is so hard to do. I would be really like, can you imagine being like, hey, do you want an extension? Of course I want an extension. Hey, locked on. I want a five-year extension. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, you, you that's what you want. Uh, and I want that money, Mac money, baby. Uh, that's Jake, not me. I didn't say that. Look at you trying to get me in trouble. You literally said it. Look at you trying to get me in trouble, Jake. But then you said it, and well, then you said I said I, it. Yeah, that's right. I want that money, Mac money, baby. You said it's my birthday. I get to get away with a, a request or two. But uh, no, I do think I do think something gets done. And what are you going to do? Go to a contract here with Evan? Like, it's so easy. Like They franchise tag kickers before? You, they have. You, you know what would get it done, too? You know what I really do? I think it would get it done. Four for 24. Is that six? Yeah. Yeah. I think it gets it done. I don't think they need to beat Harrison here. I think he's very – he said Harrison Butker, Justin Tucker, and Jake Elliott are, like, his three top kickers. You know, and you could put Evan in there if you want to, but guys he views as, like, the top of the league. It's wild that two of those guys, if you include Evan, have been Bengals at one point or another with Jake Elliott. But would he settle for six million per year? I, I think he would. And or, or five point seven. All right, well, get it done because he's literally the second best, by far, the second best player you drafted. And that's no disrespect to Cam Sample in the twenty twenty one draft class uh, or twenty twenty two draft. No, twenty one. Sorry. Uh, 2021 draft class with uh, Jamar Chase. And that's why people like to tag me in tweets saying that's why you... It is why you draft a kicker. Draft a kicker. It is why you draft a kicker. Yeah, well, they did it two years in a row. Because when they were right about Jake Elliott, too. And then they weren't right about Jake Elliott very quickly. Because Marvin got it wrong. Yep. Yeah. Mistakes were made. Don't cut him. Other specialist notes, the punter battle continues. Zach Taylor was not ready to comment on whether all three punters would kick in preseason game number one that will bear watching what do you make of that is it that it will be ray cal mcnamara the guy is competing to compete i think with brad robbins mm -hmm. in, in preseason game number one yeah I, I that's the vibe i've gotten for a little bit now because when you look in practice it's a lot of ryan ray cal and it's a lot of austin mcnamara and I think those guys are trying to, one, they got to give those guys reps so they can get comfortable and, and show what they can do. So I get it. You, you want reps holding with Evan. You want as many reps as you can watching them punt and, and adjust to life in the NFL. I also think they're comfortable with what they've seen from Brad Robbins and his development this offseason. And so he is the leader. 
like he's he's number one on the depth chart, but I think he is the leader right now. He is the favorite right now. Doesn't mean he's going to win the job. Ray Cow has a huge leg and could certainly be in the mix. I think Austin McNamara has uh, had some some steady uh, performances in practice. At the same time, I think it's going to come down to what we see in preseason. So can these guys earn the preseason reps? Yeah. I think that's what it, it, we're, we're talking about here. And that doesn't mean Brad Robbins is not going to punt. I think he'll punt in these games. I think these guys are trying to show that they deserve reps in these games as well. I think Ray Cal was more impressive today. Perhaps yesterday as well. We'll see what carries over into preseason games, though, because that really does matter. And getting up to something that approximates game speed for these punters, we, we've we seen that matter. I think we, we've talked about it with Brad Robbins as well, that transition from college to the pros and the, the slightly different speed and style of punting in the NFL. It'll probably, as you said, James, come down to those preseason games. It'll certainly come down to those preseason games. I would say that Ray Cow had a pretty nice day on uh, – on Monday, Zach Taylor sat up here not too long ago and said he didn't know what day it was. And uh, that's why I'm hesitating before I say Monday, because I also hardly know what day it is. Only other notes for me, James, on today's practice involved the one on ones with the running backs and tight ends and safeties and linebackers that I watched while wide receiver corner one on ones were occurring on another field. I've got three winners here. I've got Tanner Hudson winning. Uh, we didn't see Mike Kosicki practice as he was described as day-to-day -day by Zach Taylor dealing with some tightness. We also didn't see Geno Stone today, although we're not exactly sure why. Could just be a veteran day for Geno Stone, not raising alarm bells there by any means. But Tanner Hudson did beat uh, Von Bell in his one-on-one -on -one very handily and later beat Akeem Davis-Gaither handily in his one-on-one. -on -one. I'd say Chase Brown had a really nice one-on-one -on -one period beating Jermaine Pratt uh, on one rep. And... I believe beating, sorry, beating Logan Wilson on one rep and beating Jermaine Pratt on the other rep. So a nice series for Chase Brown going against the number one linebackers. And it wasn't all bad for Jermaine Pratt either. I had Jermaine Pratt winning his rep uh, pretty decidedly against Travion Williams. And that's a drill that's going to favor the, the offense, I think, by quite a bit. So one defensive winner there being Jermaine Pratt. And he wasn't the only defender to win but certainly of the more notable Bengals defenders that will play meaningful snaps for this team this year, uh, Jermaine Pratt stood out to me on the defensive side in those one-on-ones. Yeah, Travion was pretty frustrated after his rep. He he screamed, and uh, it, it was like in the end zone near the pylon and was not, uh, was not a happy camper there. But one-on-ones are fun. I want more one-on-ones. Yeah. Hopefully we get more. Uh, the, the Bengals off Tuesday from a practice standpoint. Then they're back Wednesday, Thursday, and then it's game time, baby. We're close to a, sh a, a, a a game preview. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it'll be interesting how we do that because Zach was asked up here, you know, are you treating this like a game week or is it training camp practice? And he said it's training camp practice, and there is a training camp practice on Thursday, but probably should expect it to be pretty light with the game coming shortly thereafter. So we'll probably mix it up. We'll have a little it's bit a of hybrid. game preview stuff and a little bit of training camp stuff for you. Uh, after Thursday, tomorrow, we'll see what happens in the news cycle and things. And there may be some things that cause us to change our plans. But with that depth chart coming out, it's about time after, you know, a couple of weeks of, of training camp and the ability to start to think about how this roster may shape up before preseason game number one for us to give some thoughts about how this 53 man roster could shape up. And the, the number of bubble players, I would say, when I went through this and started doing my preliminary thought process on the 53-man roster, the number of bubble players is quite high. So we'll probably get into that conversation on tomorrow's show. Until then, if you need a second listen, you can check out the Locked On NFL 24-7 stream on YouTube or the many other Locked On NFL shows that are doing a great job. Until next time, that's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.